Hello wonderful audience, another beautiful day here and another opportunity to bless God. I thank you for the opportunity you've granted me all these months for, and for those of you who just, who might just have um, gotten to watch this uh, for the first time or for just a couple of uh, moments or a few, a few episodes, I'm grateful that you've uh, given me audience in your space. Thank you very much. Today, I just want us to muse a little bit and ruminate and rub minds together about a trend that I noticed and I, I discussed with my wife earlier on today. And uh, it has to do with the fact that when one takes a cursory look around um, places of worship, churches um, today, more so in the United Kingdom here, um, I, I could, we could jolly well say that we have so many sick folk in church. These things ought not be so. These things ought not be so. If you remember the scripture that says, um, it's in the book of James, James chapter 5 says, is any of you, is any among you sick? That word, astenio, that is translated sick, actually means, is any amongst you so sick that he cannot help himself? Let him send for the elders of the church. Let them pray for him. Anoint, anoint, anoint him with oil and pray for him, and the prayer of faith will save him or will heal him. The context which it, it was said was that there, should, there ought not be anyone sick in church. Why? Because the price for sickness was paid at the same time that the price for sin was paid. Jesus paid, it was a full option, full package he paid for. Now, most of the time we end up not having the full benefits of what Jesus died for. Because we don't know about it. And unfortunately, it seems as if it is not even being said or being taught from the pulpit. We are being taught to live a pious life. That is generally all that we are taught. Live piously. But we don't know the benefits of or all the benefits that have, been, that have accrued to us from what Jesus did on the cross. The Bible says that Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth upon the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. What were those blessings that were for Abraham? The blessing that, in fact, what, were, what was the curse? The curse was a threefold curse. It had sickness was part and parcel of that curse. If you go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, the later parts of it after verse 13, going all the way down, it talks about multiplicities of curses that have to do with sickness and disease. Those were parts of the curse. It, it only came into being, into existence after, uh, sorry, sickness only came into existence and into being after uh, Abraham, sorry, after Adam fell. That was not part of the original plan of our father in heaven for his the pinnacle of his creation mankind no the plan was that we'll live a full life here he says be fruitful and multiply and then adam fell and then sin came into the world passed down to every generation and then sickness and disease came in of course as satan the master the, it became the master here. He, he punished mankind. Was taking it out on mankind for what he had lost from uh, his original place, his original estate. And unfortunately, after Jesus came and paid this price and demonstrated first and foremost, foremost with the early church that these things have been paid for, that we don't have to suffer any of this anymore. He, he paid for our salvation. And that salvation included redemption from sickness. The Bible says he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. 
And then he handed these things over to the church. He says, the things that I do now, when I go off to the Father, you will do greater things than this. Now, are we seeing those greater things being done in the, in the, in the body of Christ, in the church, the average place of worship? I beg to differ that we are not singing. Instead, we have one of the sickest, uh, uh, sickest uh, bunch of individuals in history, in the church. Is it that God, God has, God's power has suddenly diminished? Is it that, that this is His will for us now? I say no, resounding no. He says, uh, for, for this purpose, the Son of Man was manifest or made manifest that He might destroy. Or lose, lose the works of the devil. And these are works of the devil. Not in the church. Not in the church. Anyone who comes into the church should be taught. I'm not even talking about uh, the miraculous being done in church. I'm talking of the word being taught in church. That the individual members of the body of Christ in church can develop their faith. To the point where they shrug of disease. They take by force that which has been given to them, which the enemy has stolen. Everything included in that package. That's what the Father wants for us. And I want to charge us in the body of Christ. Even those who are in charge of teaching and preaching. And passing on information to the next generation. That we should wake up. Wake up and give the full gospel. Everything that Jesus included in that package, don't remove some parts and keep them behind and just talk about only the pious. We're not supposed to come down as uh, pilgrims on this earth, uh, destined for heaven, and then suffer disease all the way till we check out of here prematurely. You can't be an effective witness if you think about it. If you are suffering illness you are restricted that's not what the father wants for you the father wants you to have life and have it more abundantly to enjoy life to show to demonstrate see see what the power in the name of jesus has wrought for me not for us to hand over sickness to the next generation to the next generation and power meanwhile there's power resident in the church but the power is untapped no, we should wake up, wake up, wake up and kick the devil out. He's very comfortable as long as we keep quiet and take all this beating and buffeting he gives to us. And we say we are suffering for the, in the name of the Lord. No, he doesn't want you to suffer in the name of the Lord. He wants you well. He says by the stripes of Jesus you were healed. That's what he said. Are, you, are we saying that he was flogged for nothing? That's wrong. Wake up, wake up and teach, teach, teach. Tell the congregation, tell them the truth. He says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Tell them the truth. Tell them. The same way you tell them that Jesus died for their sins. I also let them know that Jesus took their sicknesses and carried their pains. And by his stripes, they were healed. As long as they hear that and they believe it. Because that's the truth. It will be manifest in them. They will shake off sickness. The same way they shake off sin and become born again Christians. The same way they accept Jesus as their savior. That's the same way they will accept Jesus as their healer. And healings will be manifest in them. In fact, they will walk in health. They will not need to be healed. They will walk in health. Sickness will not be able to attach itself to them because they will know how to shake it off their, their, their lives. Praise God. I'm getting infuriated in my spirit, but please excuse me. Enough of it in our in, in my in our family. Enough of it in our family. Stand up. Dig into that word. Teach. Dig into the word for yourself. Discover what has been wrought there for you. And take it in the name of my Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah.